Okay, everybody. Uh, today's video is going to be on the uh, setup and use of the T Bird 5800 uh, test set. And um, just wanted to go over with you real fast uh, the different pieces of equipment we'll be using for the video. Um, to start off with, we're going to be centered on the T Bird itself, 5800. I have a, an external mouse hooked up to it, to its USB port. And I'm also using its two ports to run a circuit test going from one port through this little device here back into the other port. Now, what these two devices are, these are uh, Ethernet bridge devices that work on RS-232. It's a, they're ancient old um, things uh, from, from long ago when they were first coming up with the internet. Um, basically, they just take Ethernet at a layer two, layer one level essentially. They're like a virtual wire and they bridge using RS-232 um, to a distant point. These are mainly used for like doing uh, uh, PLC controllers and other kind of industrial applications. The um, maximum speed that you can get is like 96k through it and it can only handle like 1400 size packets. It's, it's got so many limitations it's really crazy. Uh, it's essentially like the worst broke um, uh, path that you could have. But it's great for working on and, um, and if you turn the speed down it will actually pass uh, all the tests. Um, that uh, you can put through it so it's kinda cool to slow things down to see what's going on. Um, the other thing that we're using is a N300 wireless router uh, straight out of the box all you gotta do is power it up no cables at all and last but not least is our laptop and we're going to be running the Viavi uh, Smart Access Anywhere uh, software um, but this is the uh, overview of uh, all the equipment that we'll be using and um, at this point I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the computer view so we can go through in detail how to set it up and do a little test and print out some results and uh, save it to file. Alright, we'll see you at the computer. Okay, uh, we're uh back on the uh, display now and um, when you first turn it on you're going to probably get a screen that looks something like this there will be an active test running uh, test you didn't start but there it is and it's up and going uh, you can go ahead and just don't pay attention to whatever is here when it first comes up uh, just go through these things uh, one step at a time uh, and I'll show you how uh, just to uh, go save a lot of hassle uh, we're going to start off uh, by going up to the system uh, tab here and we're going to get the main screen and this is where all your folders are at and we're going to start off with going over to the network and uh, we're going to go over to the Wi-Fi and we're going to connect to the um, your Netgear uh, or whatever wireless adapter that you have and um, once you uh, uh, get connected to it um, then you can uh, go back over come over to remote and at this point you want to make sure this box is checked for VNC access and this is the um, IP address that you're going to uh, need to use the 172 one here um, over on your um, uh, PC when you go to uh, remotely connect it so uh, this is all you got to do to get ready for that and we'll go ahead and uh, uh, switch over to the, uh, uh, the PC now standby okay we're now on the uh, on the PC and we've uh, brought up the Smart Access Anywhere program and um, 
this is your initial screen when it comes up. All you have to do to connect to the uh, T-Bird is type in the, uh, the IP address of the T-Bird and then hit connect. And um, if there was any problems with it, you would not have gotten a screen. You know it works uh, when it instantly goes as a screen. Um, just telling you from experience. But anyway, we just hit on the remote screen and uh, here we are, um, right as uh, uh, we were before. And now we have virtual control. Um, I am going to make this suggestion the, the save yourself a lot of hassle. The first time you hook it up um, to your uh, wireless, uh, give the wireless uh, router some uh, internet access, and then come over here to date and time and click your uh, set clock automatically and let it do a time update serve and it'll completely update all the time and date and everything in one click and save you all the hassle. Um, other than that, um, all of these icons, they all kind of have a story onto their own. I'm going to let you guys explore all those. I'm going to go straight into uh, doing one of our tests and um, go through them. I'm just going to go straight through the setup and then straight into the doing the test. I'm going to create a report, save the report, and then transfer it to the hard drive and we'll, uh, we'll be done. So let's... Uh, Let's start off with go back and going back over here to the test, and uh, I want to come over to the uh, the beginning screen here, and I want to go ahead and uh, start back uh, from the beginning just to show you the the setup screens. I'm doing a layer three uh, uh, traffic and RFC twenty five forty four test, um, going straight through that ninety six k ether bridge. Um, here's your first screen here, symmetric loopback. Next, we're going uh, Dix. And this is where I came in and I set up the two Macs, the one on port one and port two. Um, and we'll go to the next screen. Here's the static IP addresses we give. Uh, now on the port number uh, two, it will be the same screen, just uh, these two are flipped. Uh, uh, flipped upside down from each other. Um, we'll go to the next throughput. So all we're testing. This is I'm giving it uh, 99. Uh, you want to you want to make sure that you don't overreach on what your maximum bandwidth is because it'll try and test it for a thousand meg and it won't work. So if you've got a really slow connection, make sure you dial that down uh, so they can find its way. Also uh, on the packet links, uh, there's a there's a segment um, in a couple screens coming up. I'll show you where you can figure out how big a packet that your uh, your link can send. Next screen here, number of things. This this duration it has a mind of its own. It whatever this says is a lie. Uh, it just takes whatever time it does. Um, here is going to be my target. I'm looking for 50K. Uh, this is my threshold for as far as pass or fail. And um, get to the next one. This is where you can save the profile, um, and give it a name um, so that you don't have to come and reload the screens all again. Um, I've already uh, had that done. This is your uh, beginning of the, the start. And now we're going to come over here and this first screen you see, you don't actually get to the 2544 uh, first. They want you to run this little quick check first because if you don't pass this quick check, there's no way you're gonna be able to pass the 2544. So it uh, saves you a lot of effort for this just to give you a quick little run through. Um, I did find that for this connection that I'm testing here, it's so slow that I needed to come over to this screen and make sure these were checked so that it could get in the right uh, window because uh, if without these checked every time it would uh, it would run it it would just say uh, throughput un undetermined 
uh, it had a but later on you could run the full test and it would actually give you the speed but uh, I found this was the magic trick to get it to uh, uh, show you this in the first screen so I'll go ahead and start this it gives you kind of like a little video of what it's doing um, I'm starting and all it's going to do is go and put a remote on port 2 send traffic there and back and it's going to push it to its limit to see how fast it can get it in, um, through and um, it'll it, it doesn't take uh, very long compared to the the real test uh, this one only takes a few seconds um, and there you see it, uh, it it was successful it measured it uh, 99 kilobytes which is screaming fast for that uh, for that particular setup there and um, now we're um, we're going to be able to go to the actual 2544 test and start it. Here we are. Um, if you uh, another cool thing, uh, just so you know, they got this little message thing up here. It's, it's letting you know you could check. Well, what what's going up going on up until now, and it'll tell you. Clear it out. And now we're ready to run the actual 2544 throughput test. So here we go. Um, I, I have noticed that sometimes when it's running this test, it takes the, the speed beyond the limit of what it can do and it causes it to reset and it'll go back to zero and try again. And sometimes it'll do it two or three times just to um, uh, get its uh, footing, so to speak, to know how how much it can push it, uh, but it's not too bad, like 40 seconds, and these tests have been uh, pretty uh, reliable that I've been running so far. So we're going to see if it makes it all the way to the end. We're looking pretty good right now. If there was a problem, generally, it's, you can tell back at the early stages. It's going to restart here. It's looking like it's going to it's going to go all the way through the show. 100% and we passed. Good deal. So uh, let's move on to the next screen here. We could run it again too if, if it didn't work uh, right away. Um, and uh, we're going to go over here. Uh, it takes a little bit to go through these screens, but uh, you, you get to the end. So let's have a look here. This is showing um, that we were making our limits. Our cutoff was 50, so we definitely passed with flying colors as far as that's concerned. You can see the, uh, the amount of data that each layer takes to do its business. Uh, this is the overhead layer. So by the time you get down here, this is the, the real meat and potatoes. Um, but anyway, uh, here's your stuff. We're gonna go next, and we're gonna go ahead and create a report. This is where you can put in your uh, information. We'll say uh, YouTube. And uh, tech is Jim. And um, it's got a fancy thing if you want to put some kind of logo or something on it there. It'll uh, take you over to a, uh, a thing where you can select an image file. I'm not going to bother with that. And let's go ahead and go to the next one. And this is where we're going to actually uh, create it. We can go ahead and this is where we'll change the name. And we'll call this one... Uh, Yes. Oh, that's right. Okay, this is if you wanted to rename a file that had already been written, you can select one. And I was just going to uh, 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 name it something different here. So I'll cancel out here and show you to hard do it. We'll do it like this. And we'll just call it test number test. Uh, let's go test YouTube. Oops. 
can't I guess there's no uh, space so I'll go test YouTube test YouTube all right we'll save it oh test YouTube all right and here we're gonna this is where we're gonna actually create it report saved okay now uh, in order to get this file to look at this uh, thing and put it on your hard drive you come over here to the file transfer icon and what you want to do is you want to go to the spot on your hard drive that you want to save it and um, let's see if I can uh, figure out how to do this here um, there we go and we have it Viavi created a folder just for it there's the test one of the previous one now this is where it gets kind of silly but uh, this is how it is they when you create that report it puts it in one folder um, on the Viavi T-Bird and you have no choice it has to go to that folder so and they keep they keep that folder under BERT and then reports and there it is now to get this file over here to this directory on your hard drive what you do is you click on it here and then you go like that uh, and you dump it down and now it's over here so if we came up to our uh, directory and there it is test YouTube so let's have a look and that's wonderful okay so um, that's uh, that's it this is how we got past uh, uh, tests and we're all good to go and um, thank you very much we'll talk to you soon